Good morning, Yellow Army, and welcome to a new edition of Inside Playmore. We hope you're all keeping safe, of course. As you can see, I'm delighted to be joined by United Manager Gary Johnson. How are you doing, Gary? I'm fine, thank you. Long time no here from you, mate, but uh, it's always a pleasure. Yeah, I have been a little bit elusive, sorry about that recently, but uh, obviously the last time that we uh, we spoke, uh, we weren't able to talk about any football and, and obviously the uh, football has been ongoing, although we haven't had any fixture ourselves during the uh, the last fortnight, but it's been quite a busy week at Playmore nevertheless. We've seen two new signings, so it'd be great to talk about those today. We've also had the positive news that Sam Shering and Adam Wandell have renewed their loan deals at Playmore. If we could talk about the new signings first of all, Gary, can you tell us a little bit about, about Rob Street? Um, yeah, um, obviously we, we, we felt that we needed uh, a little bit more in our strike force. You know, we got some midfield players, if you like, that can play in the number number 10 shirt, as, is, as Connor does, as Armani can, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but we just felt we, we were a bit short of a, of a number nine, if you like. And uh, Josh has done very well, but there's so many games coming up at the moment that uh, you're definitely going to need two, at least two uh, number nines fighting for one position. And that competition will, will keep them both very much in focus and, and, and what we're, we're trying to do. Um, so Rob's a, a throwback really from, you know, the old strike, this, it, number nines, as it were, you know, you had smash and grab, didn't you? You know, people like that, you had Toshak and Keegan. Um, so, you know, Rob's only a young lad and he's still learning the game, of course. And, and when they come to me, I, I bludgeon them with information and uh, <laughs> it takes a, a little while for it all to just settle uh, for the, the lad to understand his role in our shape and in our pattern um, and in our way of playing. So um, he's had a good week because he, he's picked up a lot of stuff and he's a real good learner as well. And that's what Crystal Palace told us. He's a good athlete. Um, so we'll see. We think he's a, a good addition. Um, and, you know, when he comes in, he, he's then got to prove it to us. Because he's very highly rated at Crystal Palace, isn't he, Gary? I mean, he's made a, a number of appearances for the under-23s. In fact, he's been playing for their under-23 under teams for a long time now. He has, um, since he was 16. Um, and, you know, after a conversation with the Crystal Palace staff, the under-23 staff, and then speaking to Roy Hodgson, who I knew from our Sweden days, um, when we were both out there, um, they, they said, it'd be great for you. Um, we knew of him, we knew about him. Um, we'd watched him play the last couple of under-23 games. Um, and, you know, well, we were play pleased when they said, yep, yeah, if you can help him come to his full potential, we think his potential is very good. So it'd be good for him to go out, you know, go into a club and a team where uh, we're creating a lot of chances for strikers. So, you know, it's uh, music to strike his ears, I would have thought, knowing how many chances we create and how many goals that we scored this year. And it's a big boost, isn't it? Because uh, obviously Danny Wright's been excellent so far. As you've mentioned Josh already and you've had Connor that's been playing in, in behind that's been doing very well as well. But obviously with, with Danny picking up that, that injury recently, it's, it's another big boost, isn't it? It shows that, you know, the club means business. Yeah, it is. I mean, we were, we were gutted that, you know, Danny Wright got his injury and, uh, but, um, and it was a, 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 a bad one. So it's going to be sort of several weeks. Um, and he's gutted himself because he was having the time of his life. You know, he was training and playing like a 22-year-old, uh, you know what I mean? So, but uh, he'll be back. And when he's back, that will give extra competition as well. Um, but we did need, you know, that, that other striker to come in. Now, it's very difficult to get some people in. It's much easier to, to get a young lad without any ties so that he can you know, come to us, uh, live in the lodge with some of the lads, because um, they're all around his age group, and just totally think about his football, and uh, and that's what he wanted to do. So it was a it was a good idea to 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 bring him in. And when you talk to him, you know he's a real student of the game. He watches a lot of games. He watched a lot of our games before he came, um, and then he made his decision that uh, he was happy to come. Is it safe to say that you've talked he fired him? Nearly. <laughs> They don't get talkie fight in, in one or two days sort of thing. But um, 
I try hard to do it very quick. And I think he's getting there because you need a student. You need somebody that takes it in, takes in the information and can retain the information and then produce it. And, and you know, that takes a, a few days, maybe a, a couple of weeks. But uh, when they get it, they get it. And when it becomes natural, that's perfect. You know, and then they're just doing it because it's a, a natural thing to do. Now that the reaction on social media said it all, um, Torquay fans and, and supporters of other clubs um, really up for the uh, really excited about seeing how he's going to get on at Playmore. Not content with that, Gaffer. Yesterday, uh, the club unveiled the signing of Max Sheaf from Hull City. Uh, that's he's another quality addition to the club, isn't he? He is, and uh, you know people can say we've, we've you know we've got a lot of midfielders, if you like, but on the in the on the running that we've got in the running that we've got uh, where we'll be playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday for most weeks now till the end of the season. You need a quality squad and you need a, a big squad. Um, people say, well, you know, do you need the competition? I always say, yes, you do. Because, you know, if you look at Armani's case, uh, Ace's case, um, Jake's case, as midfield players, sometimes they're out for a week or two. And, you know, we've got to make sure that we, we bring in somebody of equal quality to, to maintain the standard. And, and that's, what, what, that's what we do. And then you have to just manage the player uh, that's on the bench or not even on the bench. And you've got to say, you know, wait your time. And when it comes, then uh, if you take it, then you'll be in until you lose it. And this is a, a player that's already made a, a handful of appearances for Hull City, who are obviously until recently a, a championship side, um, and had a very successful spell at your old club, Cheltenham Town, last season, a side that obviously reached the playoffs. Yeah, that was the important one because he played a big part in, in that season. And I was for them, for Cheltenham. And uh, I was very interested, of course, because a lot of those Cheltenham lads uh, were lads that I brought to the club. And I was interested to see, you know, how the club got on and how those particular signings that I made were getting on. And um, and so I kept an eye on them. So when Rob came in, it was interesting to watch him. And he fitted in lovely. And uh, he fitted in with their way of playing. And he'll certainly fit in with, with my play, way of playing as well. If you, if you like, he's a box-to-box -box midfielder. Um, he's got energy to burn. There's a few things that he's got to pick up you know, um, with me. And he's another student of the game. And I love it when they're happy to talk football um, on, on the telephone or, you know, like obviously face-to-face, -face, but I haven't been face-to-face -face with him yet. Um, but I know from telephone conversations and from his game, I can see that uh, he's very keen, very keen uh, to do well. And it's, a, it's another great addition, as, as you say, and a quality young player that, again, was happy to... Like for instance, today he can't play in the um, in the game today uh, at Boreham Wood because um, he's he didn't sign in time. You had to have signed Friday for the Saturday, then it was postponed. So, um, however, he's driving down from Hull. We're meeting him at Gordana. He'll leave his car. We'll pick him up. He'll come with us on the coach to Boreham Wood so that he can get to know the lads. He's had his COVID negative test, which is always a good thing. You've got to make sure that you know, nobody comes into the camp that's struggling. Um, and then he'll come back the all day and I'll pick his car up and, and drive to the bigs in Torquay. So, you know, he, he was very keen to do that. And that's a long old trek on one day. But uh, he wants to be involved. So, so that's nice. And uh, credit to him. Yeah, and that actually it's, you know, says a lot for him. And it, that you've already said this before, Gary, is that it's not just about what they do on the field. It's, it's the attitude and they've got to fit in with the rest of the group. You can't have any disruptive influences, can you? No, you can't. Um, you know, we, we try and get to know their personalities before they come. Um, uh, but I just love signing players that love playing football and love their training. And then you know you, you're on you're onto a winner because if they want to do it and uh, and and sometimes it gets tough, you know it gets tough if you leave them out of the team or they don't they have a bad day in training or you know and and, and you got you got to talk them through that because they're yet new to the game and they're certainly in Rob Street's case new to 
to men's football, if you like, you know. And uh, but the good thing is they're coming into a very good personality squad. All our lads get on very well, and um, you know, and they all help each other. And if the new a new one comes in, <clears throat> as you know from the interviews that you do with it with our lads, they always say, "Yeah, I've been greeted very well, and I've been made to feel very welcome." You know. I don't tell them to say that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, they say that themselves, and, and that's nice. Then you know you've got a happy group, a happy je- uh, dressing room. Now, like Rob, uh, Max's Street uh, is called, of uh, course, a, um, a real stir. It's seen as a real uh, uh, a coup for the club because uh, there seems to be a player that everybody's saying, hey, you know, the, he should be in League Two squads uh, and all of that. So it must be good for you, Gary, for yourself and also for the club that these promising young players. People are now seeing that Talk United is a good place for these players to come and learn their trade. And obviously the, the uh, advantages for Torquay speak for themselves. Well, the good thing is, is that, you know, I've, I've been around a little while <laughs> and uh, I've had many, many a loan. And if you go through the loans that I've had, many of them have, have done very, very well. Um, some have not done well and never to be seen again. Um, and some have moved on and I think I must have a, a little bit of a reputation for helping young players especially um, develop in an, a competitive league and certainly you know with all the other divisions that I was in um, you know it's horses for courses so sometimes if you've got a championship loan then it probably has to be somebody who's had a few more games but still a young lad and wants more games. Um, or you've got like conference or second division where you bring in a real young lad um, where it's his first loan. And many of the times you know, I've had people that are first loans um, and we try and man them up um, as far as the football is concerned and all the trials and tribulations that, 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 that happen. So, you know, it, it, it's nice to have a rep- reputation that people will allow their players to come to us. Well, we uh, certainly wish Rob and uh, and Max well, and uh, we look forward to seeing them both in action. But that wasn't the only news. Uh, we've also had uh, two loanies that have been doing really, really well in the start of the season already. Uh, Adam Rundell and Sam Shering have both renewed their loan deals with the club. Um, that's excellent news, isn't it, Gary? Great news, great news. They're, they're, they're both fantastic lads. You know, they've been regulars since they've been here, which is unusual for, for young lads. Um, and they're both, they are absolutely talky fired, to, to use my words and the word you used just now. Um, and they certainly want to be part of our DNA, if you like. Um, they enjoy the training, they enjoy the games, they enjoy the camaraderie of playing serious football, playing for points, playing for people's livings. You know, that's a, another big thing. You know, we, and then I, I always say, you know, you know, and you've heard me say it before that. I want players that want to earn a living and not nick a living. And uh, these these two boys absolutely want to earn a living. And uh, they're going to be very good players in the future. And uh, you know, we, at least we've got them till the end of the season. And 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 that's and that's great because you know they'll be a major part of our success. Fantastic. Well. Thank you for joining us uh, today, Gary. Uh, obviously, got a game tonight up at Boreham Wood. Needless to say, the National League will, uh, in, in most support sides, will always take precedence. But the FA Trophy, there's there's rewards there for clubs as well, isn't there? With the with the final being at Wembley. Yeah, as you get as you get through a few rounds, um, you start thinking about it. You know, I, I got to uh, the FA Trophy final with Yeovil, and, and we won. Um, so it's no use getting there and losing. That's you know that's a that's a waste of time <laughs> with all the games that you've played and the travelling that you've done. If you get to the final and lose, then that's a that's a nightmare. So you've got to go and win it. And if we can win this one, um, then we'll you know we've got Halifax or Southport. A bit you know it would have been disappointing had we had supporters mm. uh, going to these games. But as there's no supporters now, that just means we we've got to travel. So we're not upset for our supporters because they can still see it on the on the streaming hopefully. Um, so yeah, if you're in it, you want to win it, as they say, and uh, and we're 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 no different. We've got to get over this one, Boreham Wood. They'll they'll be tough, and it's always a tough game when you go there. And then we got two other tough uh, league games in Notts County and Sutton, 
Um, so uh, you know, let's have another another Zoom in a week, and I'll tell you how we're doing. <laughs> Excellent. I look forward to it, Gary, and the best of luck tonight to to you and the team. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Well, you're right, that's it for now. Uh, we look forward to joining you uh, again soon. But uh, for now, for me and from the gaffer, we hope you will keep safe and uh, see you again very, very soon. All the best.